Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com coming at you with 2021 Topps Chrome Baseball Platinum Anniversary Edition. 12 box, pick your team number two. Uh, commemorating the 1952 design, all card chip, a lot of great stuff here, one auto, a box. Uh, big thanks to everybody here who got into the action, appreciate it. There you go, on uh, the last day of June. Thanks everyone. So there's everybody who got into it. If you've got rooftops next to your name, that means Gary has two rooftops next to his name. That means he won an extra spot in the team random, then won the Diamondbacks. So congrats to the winners here. The cardboard dust right there. And there's everybody. And Jeff, you ended up with the Rangers before we pulled the teams to the team random. So that's last spot mojo for you. Is the case. And we will do, uh, if I remember, we will do an autograph recap at the end. So if you're re watching this video, you can fast forward to, to the end. This is the end. My only friend, the end. So one chrome auto, a box, some old school autos, current player autos, rookie autos, maybe even some Glenn auto autos. And all card chip. Yeah, Ken Griffey Jr. autograph in the 1952 style would be pretty nice. That would make uh, that would make Aaron very happy. He he bought the Mariners. We got another case or two of this in the store right now. Jaspiescasebreaks.com. So check it out. Grab your teams. Justin Turner kind of heating up a little bit. A couple home runs for him today. So obviously there's going to be a lot of uh, that right there. Those are facsimile autographs. The the real autos are uh, in blue. There's the wave right there. Nice old school Ozzy Smith. Not numbered, but of course it'll ship just like that Mike Soroka. Trevor yeah. Bauer to 199. Uh, yes, Hans, unless I didn't. <laughs> Did I forget? No, I think it should be up now. I think it's been up. Is it public? Yeah, it's public. Sean Green, these are also not numbered, but everything ships. And there's the autograph, Ron Goodry. I was getting worried for a second. Second to last card, Ron Goodry, old Yankee. That's going to be for Eric and the New York Yankees. It's 44 out of 150.
Hmm. You don't see. Wait, that should be number 10, shouldn't it? Wait, that's 9. When did we do 10? Hang on a second. Let me pause this video, and here's Ken Giles. Let me pause the video. We're gonna figure this out, and then we'll come back and we'll rip the rip the next box. All right, welcome back, folks. Uh, video issue solved. This one. Good luck, everybody. All right, a Thursday getaway day for a lot of teams. A lot of traveling, travel day for a lot of teams. But we did have a a uh, small slate of games here. Dodgers. You can hear the post-game show on the background. Dodgers beat the Padres 3-1 on two Justin Turner homers. He provided all the offense. Julio Rodriguez homers. Mariners beat the A's 8-6. Homer for the second day in a row. Cal Raleigh had a two-run triple. Patrick Grissom had a grand slam and a solo homer. En route to a career high six RBIs, lifting the Cubbies over the Reds 15 to seven. Cubs pounded out 23 hits on that team. I wonder how long how long that game took. I don't have a, a game time for for this game, but it sounds like a long game. Oh, it's only three hours and fifteen minutes. That's, I, I thought it'd be three forty-five or something like that with those, the amount of hits and runs scored there. Blue Jays beat the Rays four to one. Teoscar Hernandez and Santiago Espinal each hit two run homers. Two run homers. I think Yusai Kikuchi had eight strikeouts as well. Backup catcher. Michael Perez had three home runs. Wow. Pirates beat the Brewers 8-7. Astros beat the Yankees again. Bregman's two-run double is the key. Beat the Yankees 2-1. Phillies pounded on the Braves 14-4. Luis Castillo, where does he where does he end up? He's surely going to be traded by the deadline, maybe. Well, that's what everyone seems to be saying. Nomar Garcia Parra, blue wave, not numbered. Raleigh fingers refractor. Victor Robles. Bob Feller, speckle. That's to seventy. And we've got a red Brooks Robinson. I thought it was going to be a lower number. 61 out of 100. That'll be for you, DJ, and the Orioles. These aren't the Reds, like, to 10 or something like that? Maybe I'm thinking of, like, Sapphire or something like that. There's Ralph Kiner.
Yeah, I think Muncie had that elbow injury. And he just hasn't looked the same this season. After coming off that big elbow injury. And the last card of the of the box, Leody Tavares, is your autograph. That goes to Jeff and the Texas Rangers. Last spot mojo strikes again. But I think Max Muncy's been sort of turning it around. No, maybe not. I was going to say last seven games, still hitting only 130. Seven strikeouts, just a homer. Yeah, he's, he's been struggling. But yeah, that that el yeah that elbow yeah has been really hurting him he, coming off that injury, and uncharacteristically he usually walks a lot. That's kind of his thing, but he hasn't been walking either. He's pressing a little. He's definitely pressing at the plate. Yeah, Rex, a lot of money. You're, Rex is opening with with a with an NBA topic. Is that is that what you're opening with today, Rex? Well, he was he was sent down to to Triple A for a bit to work to work some things out. His defense keeps him in keeps him in the lineup. I think it's just something something that he's just gonna have to grind through. Well, opening this section, this part of the conversation, Rex, at this point of the evening, I was, I was, I could have sworn I was like, can't. I was thinking Rex is going to come in crowing about how the Cubs had 23 hits and 15 runs, and how Christopher Morel went five for five, and how Patrick Wisdom should be an MVP candidate. Uh, I thought, I thought all sorts of that was going to come into play, but no, nothing. A lot of money in the NBA today was the Rex's comment. Oh, that's a very interesting story, DJ. Yeah, did Freeman's agent really withhold that Braves offer? That's what. That's what's being. I guess I forgot. I, I didn't. I forgot that Doug Gottlieb is in this. Is in this story somehow. So apparently, he tweeted out that whole thing and started this whole firestorm off. I don't know who knows or made it public, but I don't know who he got that information from. The agency, of course, is saying, is saying, no, we didn't do that. We didn't withhold the offer. And anyone who says so is going to get, uh, we're going to, uh, we're going to sue him. There's Frank Viola. Nice old school twin going to Raymond. So like, I, right now no one really knows exactly what the who's telling the truth. So maybe maybe it's just the Braves saying, oh yeah, that's what they did. We never we never uh, we never heard back. So the so I mean it just depends on who you want to believe. The Brave could easily say, "We never heard back. Uh, they never told you. We gave a counter. We gave an offer. We never heard back." And the agency, of course, will say, "That's a lie. We never got that offer." So uh, right now it's, it's it's sort of a he said he said situation here. There's Anthony Santander to 199. That's for you, DJ. Our shipping team will sleeve and top load those before they get sorted and shipped out. Now, as far as Freddie's concerned, he blames the agents. But of course, he's probably going to believe his buddies in the Braves organization, right? So he's blamed his agency fired him. Now, the interesting twist is that 
that agency, that sports agency, among others, represents Clayton Kershaw. They represent a lot of players, actually, but one of the players they represent is Clayton Kershaw. They seem to do fine with Clayton. So, of course, the agency is is uh, is definitely a little miffed because they're like, this is our reputation. You're, you're, you're soiling our good name. We've, we've been fine. We don't do stuff like that. So who are you likely, who are you more likely to believe? Don't know. I don't think it'd be the agent, right? Why would, why would they risk, why would, I mean, I know they're getting paid, but why would they risk their reputation? I mean, the, if it's true, then they're not going to get new clients and, and it's going to be bad for the agency who also already represents stand-up guys like Clayton Kershaw and others. They haven't had problems. So now their reputation is on the line. So that kind of sucks. I mean, can you trust ownership and general managers who will who don't care about your family? They'll trade you in a heartbeat if it's going to help improve the team. It's like in, it's like in the group breaking world when you see like some scammer group breaker like like steal a ten thousand dollar card and you're like, why would you do that? You're 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 especially if it's their full time job. Why would you do that? Why would you risk? taking that one card to ru ruin your whole reputation in the hobby. But I don't know. It could be maybe just one rogue agent within that organization. But I think that agent also represents Kershaw. So it'll be interesting. It seems like the Brave organization sounds like they wanted to save face a little bit. Truth is, they want they want a Freddie Freeman clone in Matt Olson at a younger uh, a younger player at that. So I, I I would lean Braves. Freddie obviously feels otherwise. I like. I kind of like what Clayton Kershaw said, though. He kind of said publicly, "Boy, with all the with all that crying and, and, and emotions that Freddie Freeman was showing, Clayton Kershaw was kind of like, yeah, that's fine.' But gosh, I hope I hope we're not uh, we're not hope we're not second fiddle in his mind right now. There's Dennis Eckersley to 199, which is kind of a kind of like a Kershaw way of saying, "Hey, you're with the Dodgers now. Quit it." You know, refocus. Although Freeman's been hitting well, he's been playing almost every day, so there's no indication that he's dogging it or anything like that. It's Alejandro Kirk. He's been having a nice season for the Blue Jays. I, I think I think that's a little overblown as well. I I think Freddie Freeman and Acuna were fine. There's Tyler Glass now. Nice autograph for the Tampa Bay Rays. That's going to go to Gary in Tampa Bay. No, I think 62 out of 99. Yeah, they they hugged it out at first base when they when they saw each other. I think Acuna was more more like a, is more like a little brother, or maybe just didn't like the old school stuffy way that Freddie Freeman was a leader. It's not like he didn't dislike him, but maybe they just weren't good coworkers. They didn't work well together. But outside of that, they're fine. You know, a lot of people wouldn't want your friend to be your boss. You know. Maybe it's kind of like that. So I don't think that was it. Yeah, Thomas, no more, no more breaks tonight. We are up against it. This is going to take us actually way past when we usually go off air. 
our, our, uh, our eight hours flew by rather quickly. But we'll be back tomorrow. We'll be live here tomorrow around 2 or 3 o'clock Pacific, LA time, for another night of breaks. Oh yeah, we were looking that up last night. I, I'll, I'm happy to look it up again. I think in the AL, it's pretty clear that it's going to be Julio Rodriguez. He had another homer or two tonight. His odds uh, as of today or yesterday, minus 130, according to Vegas. Um the next closest is Jeremy Pena at plus 400 and Bobby Wood Jr. at plus 550. And then it jumps to Joe Ryan of the Twins at plus 2,500. So yeah, if, if, you, if, you've, got, uh, if you've got some, uh, in, uh, some uh, Julio Rodriguez in your portfolio, I think you're going to be pretty happy there. Since he's been playing well. I think a little bit of a slow start, but... I think he's been doing pretty well since then. Um, we'll talk about the NL really quick, which is a much tighter race. We'll talk about the NL in the next box. There's Brian Ennis. Remember, these are not numbered. It's rough centering there. Tino Martinez speckled. That's to 70. That's for the Yankees. That'll be for Eric. Clayton Kershaw, blue, color match to 199 for the Dodgers. That goes to Gary. Eddie Matthews, remember these checkerboard pattern ones are not numbered. What does Frankie Monta sent up? Johnny Bench, refractor. What's with the autos popping in the last, the very last uh, car, very last pack? Jose Garcia, rookie auto for the Red Legs. That's going to be for David. Really like the this 1952 design and this chrome pattern. It's chrome look, chrome parallels look really sharp. All right, next box. So the NL Rookie of the Year favorites, according to Vegas, at the very, you know, for what that's worth, the Vegas odds, um, it's a little more murky. No one's a clear favorite. There are three players that are at plus 450. So it's about four and a half to one if you're into the fractional odds. But that's Mackenzie Gore for the pa uh, Padres, pitcher for the Padres, plus 450. Michael Harris, outfielder for the Braves, plus 450. And O'Neill Cruz for the Pirates at plus 450. Nolan Gorman is close too at plus 480, almost 5 to 1. And then it jumps to 10 to 1. So an NL candidate has not really emerged yet. I mean, pitcher Spencer Strider has been, is, is a plus 1,000, 10 to 1. Say Suzuki's been injured and he's still 15 to 1, so the market doesn't really know what they're doing. Jack Sawinski hitting dingers, but still plus 1,500. Uh, Alex Thomas is 20 to 1. Brandon Donovan, Cardinal, 20 to 1. Juan Yepes, 35 to 1. Christopher Morel, 35 to 1. Ronzi Contreras, 60 to 1. CJ Abrams with the Padres, 70 to 1. Hunter Green, 85 to 1. So it, jump significantly from there. So the NL could be interesting. I feel like if you were uh, if you like to invest in these sort of things, I don't know if you're going to get a lot of value out of 
out of putting a laying a lot on Julio Rodriguez on the AL side of things, but. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, just one one five for five day is not going to change the odds too much. Because the odds are not only based off of just how well they're doing, but it also it also mirrors um, where the money is going. So, so they adjust odds based on that. So if the public is on a certain player, whether they deserve it or not, then they'll, it'll push the odds down just so Vegas doesn't want to lose too much money. Sort of like the stock market. But yeah, if a lot of money starts coming into Christopher Morell, if so if the public puts money on that, then yeah, maybe he sees that 35 to 1, maybe go down to 30 to 1. Here's a nice Babe Ruth. That's pretty cool. Yankees, that's for Eric. Aqua Wave. But if the public says, that's why I like looking at these odds, because if the public, if the money says, uh, you know, if, if no one's jumping to the betting booth to put money on Christopher Morrell, then that indicates that, you know, they want to see more than just going five for five today. It's Tommy Pham to 100. That's for the Padres, Nolan Ryan checkerboard, Paul Molitor refractor. Willie McCovey for the Giants. We got a speckle, Frank Viola, 45 out of 70. That'll be for the Twins, Raymond. And there is Lewin Diaz, rookie auto for the Fish. That's going to go to Gary and the Marlins. Halfway there, we got about another 25, 30 minutes to go. Rebel needs, yeah, oh, you're in this one. Nice, Rebel. Rebel needs a, a Royals hit. All right. Well, we still got half the case to go. Play to the whistle. Not, not nearly done yet. Six autos and a lot of parallels left. And at worst, all card ship. I'm sure there's there's some uh, some base there. What what are we? Is Bobby Wood Jr. in here? Yeah, usually the rolls are snapped up pretty quickly. Maybe Bobby Wood Jr. isn't on the checklist. He's got to be on the checklist, right? At least at least cards. If not autographs. Oh, 2021, so no. All right, well, who else? Someone else then. Chris Bubich, maybe. Maybe Daniel Lynch. Maybe uh, Daniel Lynch. Maybe Hunter Dozier. Let's see some, uh, they got old school guys in here, or they got, you know, vet players in here. What about some Sal Perez? I'd like to see that. Old school guys, Bo Jackson. Let's get some Bo Jackson on here. George Brett. Well, George Brett doesn't sign too often. You know, what about some Brad Keller? Yeah, Brady Singer, Jorge Soler, Cool Whit. What about Cool Whit? TJ, you got it. Cool, cool quit. Say cool, cool. Say say wit, wit. Say cool quit, cool quit. Why are you saying it like that? Ah, oh, you're gonna get this Nick Heath, silver, refractor, and here's the auto early this time. Greg Luzinski. Everyone remembers Greg Luzinski, right? Rick T with the Phillies. 
150 out of 199. Mitch White had a nice start today. Corbin Burns refractor. Uh, 57 out of 70. Look at this dick. Dick Allen. With the classic Red Sox red uniforms. That uh, White Sox red uniforms. That is Chris Parent with the red. Eddie with the White Sox. And they're red. That that really tripped me up. Ah, uh, Greg Luzinski. Oliver remembers uh, as a as a bit of a bomber. Early eighties. Let's look at this scrub right here. Andre Scrub, 28 out of 100. No, I don't want no scrubs. Scrub is a guy that can get no love from me. Hanging out the passenger side of his best friend's ride. Try to holler at me. Oh, nice. Bases loaded. Looked up the cards in the hit parade. We got by far the best card in there value-wise. The doll came in second. Yeah, the, those tennis cards are actually kind of underrated. People are kind of always kind of, kind of raise an eyebrow and they're like, eh, tennis, you know, scrunch up their face a little bit, tennis. But then they then then I then they come back and be like, that tennis actually sold really well. I have no idea what. Does anyone know the story behind the the red white Sox uniforms? I love my Dodgers. I, don't, I already watched this game. I don't need to replay replay this game. Maybe we'll go with Quick Pitch. Who's on Quick Pitch tonight? Does Heidi Watney do Quick Pitch anymore? I feel like I never see her anymore. That's Sierra Santos. But no, Heidi Watney's is Apple TV now, I want to say. I don't think she hosts anymore. I think Kelly Nash still does it every once in a while, hosts it. Rookie Refractor, Chris Brubich, Kyle. Yeah, what did that boxing card dual autograph go for? Sometimes those duels can be a blessing and a curse. Sometimes someone's like, well, I like Pacquiao, but I don't like Mayweather, so I don't want both. Oh, 4, 485, that exact one. And some people are like, I want Mayweather, I don't want Pacquiao. There's blue Deion Sanders, Neon Dion, to 199. Look good, feel good, play good. I love that. Ryan Reynolds to 70. I feel like he had a couple dingers the other day. Davey Garcia, and we've got another twice in a row, Greg Zizinski, 
Luzinski. Oliver thinks he hit 40 home runs one year. So the first one was the refractor, which was numbered, Rick, and this one is just the base auto. Looks like the white and red uniform is their 1971 home uniform, but why? Are they trying to get in, get some of that Red Sox market share? That just trips me out. That's like that's like writing uh, that's like writing the the word red with a blue marker or something like that. Like that, you can't do that. Oh, that just gives me the creeps. That's weird, right? Oh, gross, look at that. Oh, something's wrong there. That just, that just trips me out. I don't like it. Don't like it. Not a fan. Get it out of here. Oh, I guess they... they I guess they did have elements of red in the uniform. Yeah, but. Yeah. How long did that last? Just one season? Those red White Sox uniforms? Ah, Luzinski. Corrections and retractions. Never hit 40 homers. He had 30 plus homers four times, a four time All Star. Gino, you didn't like those Cardinals powder blue uniform, the old school uniform? I like those. I like those. And the, and the Phillies has kind of a powder bluish sort of color, too. I thought those were nice. Wow, what a team. Oliver just remembers in the early 80s, that 83 squad, they had Ron Kittle, Carlton Fisk, Harold Baines, and White Sox edition of Greg Luzinski. Whitey Ford. Dane Dunning. Andy Almar Jr. Look at that big catching catcher's glove there. Steve Sachs and Colton Wong for the Cardinals. Cardinals edition going to Gary in St. Louis. Uh, 66 out of 150. Just just got off the DL, the IL, recently. The injured list. Hopefully helping my fantasy team out. Nick Heath for Kyle. 54 out of 70. Speckle. Rookie Speckle. And Dexter Fowler. 32 out of 100 for the Cardinals. That'll be for Gary and St. Louis. St. Louis. And, oh, the Colton Wong was the autograph, right? For a second, I thought we got shorted not. All right, next box. What's everyone doing for 4th of July? Anyone have any fun 4th of July plans? Fourth of July falls on uh, on a Monday this year, right? Yeah, Monday the fourth. 
So I took advantage of that, ladies and gentlemen, and I paired a. Uh, that's a. That's a. It's a store holiday too. We'll be closed on Monday the fourth. Um, we pair. I paired a day off before and after the fourth, combined with my uh, usual Friday Saturday weekend. I built myself out a nice little vacay there. As you don't, know, doesn't happen too often where I'm able to do that. No, Jaspies will be dark on the fourth. Retail store and online will be closed. Everyone gets a holiday. That's a that's a Jaspi company holiday. Everyone gets a little time off. So enjoy your Fourth of July, everybody. Don't don't blow a hand off. Otherwise, it'll be much more difficult to chat when we're live. So careful. You're, wor you're working? You're going to be in Cleveland? Wait, wait, wait. That's un-American. Uh, base is loaded. Who, who do you work for? You don't have to say it. But come on. Give the guy a day off on the 4th. Ah, you work for an airline, huh? Uh, airlines don't rest. I mean, people like to travel on holidays, it turns out. Well, my hat, if I was wearing one, my hat is off to the airline industry. They, they've, they've had it pretty rough. been tough for them. For pilots, flight attendants, crew, everybody. There's David Wright to 70 for the Mets. They have to deal with some of the worst. We got an Albert Pujols, 54 out of 199, Angels edition. That's going to go to Eric. George Springer. Oh, is this America's hottest chat service? It's a family show, but I guess we're going to have to hear that that uh, that hot chat line on in the background. And the last one is Jim Cat Cot Jim Cot Cat. Broadcaster sometimes puts uh, puts foot in mouth. That goes to the to Raymond and the Twins. Raymond and the Twins. Yeah, Jim Cott, right? Hall of Famer. I'll be in uh, I'll be in San Diego, uh, the home of my alma mater. Uh, San Diego, they know how to put on a. Uh, I don't think I've seen fireworks for two years, right? I don't think I think July 2021. Things were still a little touch and go, so there weren't weren't really like like uh, citywide fire. Maybe there were. I don't know. No, there wasn't because where was I? I was in Orange County last year. For the for, and uh, they did not. They usually have a public fireworks show that they weren't due to the pandemic. Uh, some uh, my friend lives in Corona Del Mar. Some it's it's a pretty pretty nice neighborhood, pretty well off neighborhood. And um, th there apparently some rich dude uh, hired a fireworks fireworks crew. Near his like near his like beach house in one of like the sort of marina harbor areas and put like set up a big barge outside his his uh, waterfront home 
and put on like a twenty thousand dollar fireworks show that everyone got to see. So. But uh, in the year in twenty twenty, there was there was no gatherings either. So I wanted to uh, I had the urge to go see a proper fireworks show in San Diego, especially with all the military presence there. They do an excellent job with the fireworks. So I'm looking forward to that. Catching up with some old friends, but so now I'll tell you something interesting that I'm doing. Um, I am going to attempt to take uh, public transportation the entire way. So from my house, I'm gonna walk to a train station, a metro station that's nearby, take that to downtown LA, where there's an Amtrak station, and hop on that and head down to uh, to San Diego. My friend lives near the in downtown near the near the train station. Luis Uri is to seventy. Now the ch the challenge is is that I think my my train is early in the morning. And I kind of did some planning out, and I realized that it's going to take maybe an hour and a half at that particular time in the morning to get to take the metro downtown. So we'll see how we'll see how it goes. I think I'm going to be pulling a by the time I get out of here kind of an all nighter. I can sleep on the train. It's a 3 hour ride. All right, there's the 25 Harrison Bader for the Cardinals. That is for Gary. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's a nice, it's a nice try. And listen, especially with ooh, there you go, Brad Keller for the Royals. Kyle with his Royals. That's Rebel in the chat. There you go. There you go, Rebel. Second to last auto for you. Plus some parallels and the other base cards and whatnot. So not bad. Let's uh, let's let's pray for multiple all-star appearances for Brad Keller from here on out. All right. Yeah, it's a nice train ride, Oliver. I I don't think I've taken it since I was a little kid. But you know, with gas prices these days. And with a metro station, you know, maybe 15 minute walk from my house, I was like, I should try this. This is for science. We'll try it out, see how I feel. But I think it's only like 30 bucks. Uh, 30 bucks like each way. And if I took my car down there, it's more than, it's more than 60 bucks for Maybe a tank and a half of gas to go the, down there and back. So, yeah, I heard about that Amtrak crash. Judging from, uh, but based on your shark logic, Gilo, I shouldn't take the train tomorrow, right? It's like, well, I know someone that was really close to a big train crash, an Amtrak crash in Missouri, so. I don't know the SNA airport code. I'd fly if I could. If if if, if there was a if there was a uh, what's gonna call it? If I could go from the Santa Monica airport. Oh, is that out of Orange County? If I could, uh, yeah. But then I'd have to drive to Orange County. And at that point, I, I might as well just drive all the way down there. But I feel like if there was, if Santa Monica Airport had a, a uh, Santa Monica had like a private jet that could take me from there to San Diego, that'd be nice. 
What about a boat? Uh, where are my boating options? Can I take a boat out of like San Pedro? Can I charter a boat to take me to San Diego? How come no? I feel like there should be like a, a public boat or I feel like I could charter a boat. I could hire someone, I suppose. George Brett, refractor. And it looks like another out of 25 coming up. It's another Cardinal. That's Yachty, 22 out of 25. I think I did look up a flight from LAX to, to San Diego. I think it was... Uh, I think it was, it, was, it was kind of expensive. I mean, of course, it, I don't think there's a lot of flights there in the first place. But. Expensive. But the train is should be pretty good. Takes a few hours, which is probably as, as long as it would take me to drive anyway. But I could like sleep on the train or read or something. Not have the stress of driving. No wear and tear on my car. And Leody Tavares, gold, 49 out of 50. Nice one. Rangers, last spot mojo for Jeff. And then I can come back pretty come back on the train kind of stress-free so let's see how it goes I, I, I feel very cosmopolitan I feel like I'm in Europe or something like that doing all this metroing and training around there you go ladies and gentlemen thanks for keeping me company 2021 Tops Chrome Baseball Platinum Anniversary in the book 12 box pick your team number two here's a quick little recap thanks everyone for watching it's a pretty friendly price point on uh, on these brakes, ladies and gentlemen, and some nice design, nice blast from the past, a lot of parallels to chase, so check it out. Um, we've got more in the store, jazbeescasebrakes.com. Have a great 4th of July, everybody. Jason will be with you for the next couple nights. I think Chris is filling in for me on Sunday. We're off on Monday the 4th, 4th of July. Um, someone else will be here on Tuesday, and I'll be back in action on new release Wednesday, whatever's coming out then. Thanks, everybody. Have a great night. Bye-bye.